Shalom and welcome to another episode in our ongoing series called Faith Journeys with God in the Land. Today we're at the Pool of Siloam here in Jerusalem as a part of the City of David excavations. Shalom from the Pool of Siloam. It was back about 2005 when they found the real pool mentioned in John 9. And I'm actually down on the steps of the pool right now. What's really exciting today, as I'm recording this, the end of March 2023, they've now just began to excavate the beginning steps of uncovering the other side of the pool. Now there behind me are the steps, the real steps of this pool of Siloam. Dates back to a few, probably a hundred or 200 years prior to the time of Christ, but uh, it's mentioned in the New Testament. And this was where the blind guy born from birth blind that is actually was told by Jesus to go and wash his eyes in this pool after after Jesus put mud on his eyes but what's really exciting at least today is what we see behind me this is really over the last month or so new excavation work in preparation for uncovering the rest of the pool and that's quite remarkable they're still not down to the level where they have to slow down and carefully extract or dig through some of the the antiquity dirt if you will this was a piece of property owned by the greek orthodox and apparently there was a deal that was made between the city of david and this church to allow them to now dig down through. So as you see behind me again, these original steps of the pool, now I'm hoping in a short time they'll expose and discover the rest of the pool. So what we find here is an amazing bit of archaeology, but the story is an incredible one too, because when we talk about this guy named, well, he's not named, but he's blind from birth. In fact, his, Jesus' disciples ask who sinned, he or his parents that was born blind. This man is no doubt in a very hopeless state. And yet Jesus, who put mud on his eyes, told him to go and wash in this pool. The conversation is really an interesting one. Uh, read all of John 9. It's actually the longest miracle that we have in the Gospels. The Pharisees are all upset because Jesus did this on the Shabbat, on the Sabbath. And yet uh, this man, whose eyes were opened, uh, is questioned four times by the religious leaders until he actually, I believe, had his spiritual eyes open. Uh, this blind guy, first of all, uh, just knew of this man who cured him as a man named Jesus. It was just a general statement. And then when asked, well, who did this for you? The man now who could see said, well, maybe he's a prophet. But then eventually, uh, this blind guy who now I believe can see spiritually, when asked again, he thinks that maybe Jesus is the son of God, but finally Jesus speaks to him at the end of the passage and ask him, do you believe in the son of man? And the, the blind guy goes who is he sir and Jesus says he is the one speaking to you and the blind guy finally replies Lord I believe 
Lord, I believe. It's a remarkable statement of faith, whereas his eyes now were open. Not only his physical eyes, but his spiritual eyes. You know, in our journey of faith, we have to keep our spiritual eyes open so that we can walk in God's ways. He already has opened our spiritual eyes as he has touched us by his grace. We're aware now that we are sinners. We can't save ourselves. And yet we are invited continually to be people who walk with our eyes open, our spiritual eyes, so that we can see what God wants to accomplish in and through us. And just like uh, the new excavation of the other part of the pool has just begun, I hope and pray that each of us will have our eyes open and God will excavate, if you will, and reveal to us the reality of our faith. And with a thankful heart, we can say to him, Lord, thank you for opening up my spiritual eyes, just like the guy who was sent to this very pool in John 9. But uh, may we be faithful in walking with our eyes open as we are used of God in his kingdom. So thanks for joining me in this walk in this really exciting new ex excavation here at the Pool of Siloam. And until next time, Shalom.